Hey guys, and welcome back to Dragon Exotics. Now, some of you may notice I really haven't been posting in a while. And short answer is things are busy. Vet school is busy, kind of hectic, but figured I'd post this today. So it is winter time. And if any of you guys have sulcata tortoises that are outside and big enough to be outside, then you guys have an idea of maybe what kind of shelter you wanna do now or what you wanna do in the future. Because sulcata tortoises, unlike some of the normal tortoises, like desert tortoises and others, they do not brumate. So the mammals tend to hibernate, in which we tend to say, okay, yeah, 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 sulcatas don't hibernate. But really the term is brumation, where their body just slows down um, so that they're not going to be moving around in the winter. And it looks, it's very similar to hibernation. But sulcatas do not brumate. And so if the temperatures start to drop, the sulcata may be getting slower, but that means that they're kind of slowly dying on the inside because they're not getting that warmth to one, digest their food, to keep their vital organs just functioning. So you wanna make sure that you provide a warm enough area for, the, area for them to actually be able to go in during the winter when it gets cold out here. So I will be posting a video hopefully in the next few months about the actual outdoor enclosure for a sulcata because they usually like to have a nice big area for them to roam and eat grass. But for right now, because we just moved, we have this nice winter enclosure behind us and he does get to roam out here right now. But this video is about the winter enclosure. So let's do this. Okay, here we are. Now, as you can see, we've got a bit of insulation on this door because it gets pretty cold where I'm at. Uh, it's cold enough to the point where the nights can be like 16 degrees or sometimes a little less so we get snow and we get all that fun stuff so if you live in a cold area like i do in northern az then you're going to want some insulation in whatever heated uh, winter enclosure you have but before we go in i kind of just wanted to touch a little bit on the winter diet for sulcatas for sinky because he doesn't have much uh grass area to roam right now because all the grass is dead then we kind of just supplement him with a bit of this Missouri tortoise diet which is not too expensive you can find it on Amazon as well as some local pet stores and it's really good and fibrous and it's honestly not bad to add to their regular diet as well just year round so I do give him that as well as some orchard grass hay, as well as meadow grass hay. And he does tend to eat that. So it kind of keeps those, the nutrition in balance. Uh, you wanna make sure you're not overfeeding with any of those normal staple veggies you would give to regular reptiles like collard greens, um, the very occasional spinach, uh, and just some of those higher nutrition greens because you don't want to overfeed them, cause them to start pyramiding and have some other issues like that. Uh, but we can go into that in a different video. But yeah, so their normal winter diet, as I said, you're want, going to want to add that Missouri diet. You want to give them some grass if you can. And then if not, you can have that orchard grass hay, uh, any sort of just grass that you can add to their diet. Um, lastly, for winter nutrition or diet, obviously water is a big thing. And so with all of my reptiles that I have during the winter, to make sure that they are uh, safe or as safe as they can be, if I notice that one of them is kind of acting slower, looks like they're not drinking enough water, having an issue, and after giving them multiple baths, warm baths, and they still look like they're not as active as I would like them to be, or if I'm ever worried about it, I will actually give them a bit of an electrolyte soak. So just to help kind of amp up their electrolytes, just help them out a bit. And then lastly, because I'm a bit of a par paranoid reptile keeper, I also have uh, this critical care for herbivores. And what that stuff does is usually you, in, in the typical circ circumstance, you will force feed it to a reptile when they get like beyond the point of eating themselves and they're just in really bad condition. But I like to have it on hand so it never gets that bad. So for instance, for like my iguana for braiding season, uh, when she stopped eating, which they typically do, uh, she had laid her eggs, everything was all done. Usually she starts eating with it a few weeks after, but she didn't. So I had um, 
I had to force feed her some of that stuff. Now force feed isn't what you think. It's not like, oh, let's shove this down your mouth. It's more like just gently pull their lip down and put some in their mouth. Uh, it's really gentle. It's not stressful for them. So it's pretty good. But anyways, you guys have been looking here for this lovely shelter that we have in here and to see Sinky. So let's bring you in. So let us voyage into this lovely shelter that we have. Now, I'm not a handy person and that means that I didn't build this myself and I actually got it from somebody on the Facebook marketplace, which you guys may be able to do as well. So it's pretty warm in here. And as you can see, like even just by judging on this little thermostat that I have, the little probe isn't directly on the heat mat, but it's still about 68 degrees just in the general area. I would like it to be warmer, but as I said, he did just wake up, so it's just a little bit cooler. So he's doing good. See, he's still plenty active. So his reflexes are good. Now for a while here, I was kind of worried how he was doing because when I first set this lovely enclosure up, he only had, well, he initially only had this middle light right here. And I had added this light thinking, oh, okay, good. He'll be smart enough to move over to the light in winter time. And uh, I don't know if many of you guys who have tortoises realize yet, but some tortoises are a little bit dumb. So the next step I did was I added another heat lamp over here, this nice uh, red one. You don't want to fill your night box with too many red ones because it can actually uh, hurt the way they see. So it would end up making it so they can only see in red, which is obviously not good for them. And so I had added just one of these red bulbs. Uh, the one on the far right, which is the one I just added uh, a few days ago, is is going to be changed to a daylight blue one. So it's also just a bit of different color in here and easier for him to see at night. But these little sections under these heat lamps are so nice and toasty. So. He can crawl under here and be all nice and warm. And the problem I was running into is no matter like what heat lamps I added, I added the middle one, he would go on either side, the coldest side. And then he'd be cold in the morning and I'd have to, you know, give him a warm bath and help kind of just warm him up a little bit. Now he wasn't freezing, but it was still an issue. And then I had added this one, which he used it a few times, but then he started going into this back corner when there wasn't any heat over here. And he's had this heat pet here the entire time. And he does like to use it as he is right now, but you know, sometimes they're not smart and they just want to hang out in the areas that don't have the heating. So my third option was of course adding this light. And this has been the best setup for me personally. I know some people out there use the little radiator heaters or oil fitted heaters, electric heaters, whatever you need to use. But just for me, I'm using these heat lamps since they're low wattage and it's just for me, I feel like this least of a fire hazard. Um, you can see the hay here, but it'll never get hot enough to burn. Anyways, this is the setup I did end up getting. So we've got this nice heat lamp over here. We've got the middle heat lamp and the one on the right. In addition, we have his uh, little Reptotherm heater and with all of that, there's really nowhere he can go in here that's going to drop below, I'd say about 65 degrees, even when it's 16 degrees outside. So his warmest spots, as you can see, like this thing right here, it's 78 degrees, like to this point. Now his shell goes a little bit higher. Um, and so it can be around 80 something degrees. I do check it occasionally, but either way, it's pretty warm for him to be basking in. And this one is a very similar range as well as this one over here. So pretty much it's all really toasty. <laughs> Good for a tortoise tortoise. So you don't risk them um, getting too cold and then getting sick or getting a respiratory infection because nobody wants that with their tortoise. Right here, I just keep a nice little, it's just a little Tupperware bowl full of, um, the grass hay and then some Missouri diet. Obviously he doesn't eat all of these pellets at once. I mean, he kind of just eats it as he needs to. So I'm not too worried about overfeeding with that since he seems to balance himself. 
Uh, then over in this corner, we've got just a little dish of water. He got it a bit dirty earlier today, so I'll have to clean that. But yeah, so he's got a little dish of water. And then right here, I have a camera so I can check up on him. And then I forgot to mention that one more fact about this thing right here, this little digital uh, thermometer is I can check it on my phone. So it's Bluetooth and it will alarm me if the temperature gets too high or too low. And I usually move this around um, depending where I need it in here. Since I know this spot uh, stays pretty consistent, I'll move it like over here during the nighttime just to make sure it doesn't get too cold. Um, let's see, what else do we have over here? Well, here's Sinky. We can bring him in the light for you guys. Huzzah! Teleportation. So I put Sinky under the heat lamp. He's decided to move around a bit, come out. See, he's pretty active. If your sulcata is in, I guess, what you think is your normal heat box and you're unsure if it's getting warm enough, if your sulcata isn't active, you notice he's not wanting to eat like anything. He's just really slowed down. I would really recommend checking that heat, making sure that it's, there's a spot that it's least 80 degrees. Um, just make sure because if not, they can get sick and then possibly die and you just won't notice in time. So, and you can see this one is actually rising a bit. I had moved it over earlier, so it's just adjusting. So that's nice and toasty right there. But yeah, so we got some insulation panels on the outside. Just a little bit, enough to keep most of the air out. Got some nice insulation right here, so he can walk out whenever he wants to. Uh, but I think that's about it for this video. Honestly, I just wanna make sure you guys know how you can set up a quick and easy, just warm shelter for your sulcata. And obviously it does not have to be this big. It could probably be half the size for somebody, you know, his size. But because I know how big he's going to be as an adult, I figured I would invest in this um, this kind of custom house and just get it for him. So when he is an adult, I don't have to change it again. And it seems to be working out pretty well. I think I will probably end the video here. Uh, just to restate, it is like 50 degrees outside. And um, just this thing right here, being close to that heat lamp is already at like 95. And he can go outside whenever he wants, and when he wants to come in, he comes into a nice, warm, and safe area. So, as you can see, he's happy, and I think we're all happy. Hope you guys learned something in this video. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything, if you guys want me to touch on anything else. Uh, but yeah, just let me know, and hopefully more videos will be soon to come in the next few months. But yeah, guys, have a great day, and thanks for watching Dragon Exotics.